Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. In the last update, I mentioned the likelihood of 30 Celsius being reached or exceeded. That has happened now in quite a few locations. The highest temperature recorded so far is 31.6 Celsius at Heathrow. Is that likely to be beaten during the next couple of weeks or not? I'm going to begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. This sequence starts at 15 GMT on Tuesday the 20th of July. I think it's worth noting that at the outset, there are some thunderstorms being shown here over central and eastern England. Elsewhere, there's an odd shower, but it's mostly dry. I think those uh, thunderstorms have the potential to really bring some downpours to one or two places. They'll probably be quite hit and miss, though. Through the coming days, high pressure continues to have a good deal of influence on the weather. But as we go into the weekend, things start to change quite markedly. This is 06 GMT on Saturday the 24th of July. You can see this area of low pressure pushing up from the southwest and it has the potential to bring some heavy and thundery outbreaks of rain. There is uncertainty about the track that is going to be taken. On this particular sequence what we see is heavy rain there pushing up into northern Wales and northern England. Scotland, Northern Ireland remain mostly dry. But some computer model runs are keeping that a little bit further southwards, in which case the rain would really probably just be pushing into southern and central England. Nonetheless, as I say, it does have the potential to really bring some significant totals in places, but uncertainty there just about how far northwards it's going to be moving. As that low pressure clears away in the early part of next week, a weak ridge of high pressure builds, so dry for a time, but by Tuesday the 27th of July, on this sequence, we can see outbreaks of rain. They're pushing in from the Atlantic into northern and western parts of the UK. And it's looking like quite a changeable pattern is beginning to establish itself on this particular uh, computer model run anyway. To show a couple of jet stream charts associated with the same GFS data, this is 15 GMT Wednesday the 21st of July. At this point, the jet stream is really weak and disorganized, mostly to the west and to the north of the UK. We're under the area of high pressure there. But moving forwards to Sunday the 25th, and we've got the thundery low, which is bringing the potential of the heavy downpours this weekend, starting to pull away. But if we look into the Atlantic there, the jet stream is strengthening. And as I say, that probably heralds the start of a more changeable or unsettled period of weather. Not quite sure how long that's going to last for. I'll address that by looking at the ensemble data shortly. The other thing I just wanted to take a quick look at is the temperature profile. So the two meter temperatures, the ones we experience down at the ground level uh, for the next few days. They are quite interesting. And to illustrate this, I'm using data from the UK Met Office UKV model. This is the high resolution local model which they run. And what we can see here at 15 GMT on Wednesday, the 21st of July, temperatures there in the south and the southwest reaching 31, 32 Celsius. In East Anglia and uh, the southeast, it's actually cooler. This is quite an unusual profile because often the hottest weather really does affect eastern and southeastern England. But on this occasion, it's centered uh, further west. Jumping forwards 24 hours, so Thursday the 22nd of July. And once more, it's a similar story. You've got uh, values here being reaching the low 30s in southern Wales, parts of southwestern England. Also, it's hot in Northern Ireland. Once more, though, it's cooler as you head eastwards. Jumping forward to Friday the 23rd. By this point, temperatures are generally beginning to drop. You can see the highest values there, probably in Northern Ireland, maybe 28, 29 Celsius, also in western parts of Wales. But once again, central and eastern areas, values are significantly lower. It's not cold by any means, it's still pleasantly warm there, but it's not the hottest part of the country. And as I say, that is quite, that is quite unusual. By Saturday the 24th, this is when the GFS really brings that area of low pressure into play. We can see the UKV models also showing quite a significant change. The yellows and greens across most of the United Kingdom by this point show temperatures in the upper teens or low to mid 20s. So quite a lot cooler as we head through the first weekend of the forecast period 
that low pressure coming into play. Rainfall, well, as I hinted, as I, it, it really is going to depend a lot on how far northwards the area of low pressure tracks. This is the aggregate rainfall totals for days 0 to 5 from the GFS model. You can see values there across much of England and Wales between 20 and 30 millimetres. It's drier as you head into uh, Northern Ireland, Northern England and Scotland. So essentially the further north you go, the drier it's becoming because those places are out of reach of the area of low pressure. Nonetheless, I think there is some uncertainty just about how this will play out. Next, I'll take a look at charts from the deterministic model runs for Tuesday the 27th of July. The idea here is to see whether or not they're consistent with each other. First up, the GFS, so the run which the initial animation was based upon. What we see is high pressure throwing a ridge from the Azores north eastwards, and that's toppling over the UK, but all in all, it's quite a changeable pattern. The German icon model, this has the Azores high pressure orientated slightly differently, building northeastwards into the mid Atlantic. Once more, though, it's changeable across the UK. Next, the Canadian model, the GEM. This has high pressure having more influence in southern and central Britain, possibly for a time, so it could be quite warm and dry there. Showers more likely further north. But I think really it's just a question of timing. The general pattern which it's showing is similar to the other two. The UK Met Office also has the Azores high pressure building northeastwards into the mid Atlantic, leaving the UK under quite a changeable pattern. The European model, the ECM, the Azores high pressure building northeastwards, similar once more, but the UK there at this point probably quite changeable, maybe more settled in the south, southwest, or heading in that direction at least. So I think taking all those deterministic model runs together, there is a reasonably good degree of consistency. Of course, the details are different between each one, but Taken as a whole, they're showing quite a changeable pattern across the UK and cooler by that point than it is in the short term. With the first week ending mixed, the next question is, will that trend continue during week two of the forecast period? To try and answer that, I will take a look at the ensemble data, starting with a 16-day GEFS plot for London. Across the top are forecast air temperatures at about 1,500 metres above sea level. The thick black line represents a 30-year average, so in the short term, all the runs are well above it. However, from around the 27th of July onwards, right through to the end of the forecast period, those runs are fluctuating above and below it. It's looking like a much more average picture developing. In terms of rainfall, across the bottom here, 24th to 26th of July, some big spikes appearing there. That's when the area of low pressure moves up from the south. Once that clears away, so 27th of July onwards, there are rainfall spikes continuing to appear, but there are fewer of them. What that is suggesting is an ongoing chance of showers or even longer spells of rain, but also dry days or dry periods, so quite mixed. Therefore, I think if I had to summarise the second week of the forecast period for London, I would say fairly typical. Looking at Belfast, so moving up to the northwest, the air uh, profile, air temperature profile is actually very similar, so I'll not dwell on it. Rainfall is a little bit different because around the 24th to 26th of July, there are fewer spikes appearing. That's because we have the area of low pressure moving up from the south. It's less likely to impact Northern Ireland and Scotland than it is Southern England. From the 27th though onwards, right through until the end, there are a number of rain spikes appearing. But once again, I would summarize it in a very similar way to the London plot by saying fairly typical fairly average, an ongoing chance of showers or outbreaks of rain at times. All in all, though, a reasonable amount of dry days or dry periods mixed in, temperatures not far from the average. 
With the summer holidays upon us, I expect many people will be heading down to southwestern England in the coming days and weeks. Therefore, I thought it would be interesting to uh, take a look at a location in that part of the world. I've brought up the chart for Plymouth to do that. The air mass profile is actually a little different to the London plot. We see cooler air returning sooner. I think the reason for that is because the area of low pressure moving up from the south has cooler air on its western flank, and therefore that will be reaching southwestern England before it reaches the southeast. Nonetheless, through the second week, it's a similar, similar theme. Uh, air temperatures at about 1500 meters above our heads, just fluctuating around the average. The rainfall profile is also similar to the London one. There's the wet period, 23rd to the 26th of July or thereabouts. Then the number of rain, rain spikes decreases, but there is an ongoing chance of heavy showers, perhaps, or even longer spells of rain. Fairly mixed, fairly typical, I think. Looking at the two meter temperature data tables, here's the 16 day one for London. Each column shows the maximum forecast temperatures on a given day from all of the runs in the GEFS. We can see there isn't really a strong trend here. In the, it, once the initial warmth moves away, most of the runs are in this orange category, which is 21 to 25 Celsius. So probably a little bit warmer than average, but not as warm as it has been recently, of course, when we've had temperatures climbing above 30 Celsius on a number of days. And really that, that pattern of temperatures being close to a little bit above average continues through the second week. I think a, a lot will depend on the extent of cloud cover rainfall and obviously sunshine, but really not far from the norm, I think. Looking at the plot for Belfast, data table for Belfast, similar story, albeit at a lower level because the average maximum temperature for Belfast this time of year is, is around about 18 Celsius. For London, it's 22 or 23 Celsius, so significantly cooler on average as you head northwestwards. Again, though, I think looking Things looking fairly typical here through the second week. The vast majority of runs in this orange uh, category, 16 to 20 Celsius. And as I said a number of times, the GEFS raw data tends to underestimate maximums by one or two degrees. So you could add perhaps one or two degrees onto these, uh, onto these categories for both London and Belfast. Looking at the surface level pressure data table, I'm using Nottingham today as the chosen location. I think to, there isn't a strong trend here. Once we get past this, this low pressure dominated period in the short, towards the end of the first week, shown by the columns being entirely green, the amount of yellows returns, and that becomes the dominant color in each of the daily columns. Those are runs forecasting maximum, to, uh, maximum pressures of between 1,011 and 1,025 millibars. This time of year, the average is around about 1,014, 1,015 millibars. All in all then, fairly typical. Perhaps pressure just on the lower side of average according to, to this data, but there isn't, I don't think there's a great, the, uh, there's not a great deal in it. The signal isn't strong at all. Taking a look at the uh, pressure anomalies, this is days for uh, days five to 10. This blue shading over the UK is indicating lower than average pressure being likely. That's pointing towards a low pressure dominated scenario towards the end of the first week and into the early part of the second week. Moving forward, so now looking at the anomaly for days 10 to 15, the blue, which was over the UK, has moved north eastwards there into Scandinavia, and the yellows and browns in the Atlantic are pushing in towards the UK. So it's, it's, it's suggesting that the low pressure area is probably becoming centred to the northwest of the UK and Scandinavia. High pressure beginning to have more influence as it builds back in from the west. I think all in all, fairly typical. It doesn't suggest hot conditions are likely, but it doesn't support the uh, a washout pattern either. Fairly typical, I guess. So to summarize, 
Week one begins very warm or hot in much of the UK, but there is a risk of thunderstorms in central and eastern England for a time. Between the 24th and the 25th, downpours and thunderstorms push northwards across much of England and Wales. There is uncertainty about just how far northwards they will be spreading, with some computer models keeping the rain mainly in southern counties. Once that clears away, it becomes dry for a time, but the first week ends on a mixed note, with a risk of rain returning from the west, and temperatures by then will be closer to the average. Week two, confidence is quite low, but at the moment things are looking changeable. That means all regions can expect some showers or possibly even long spells of rain, but also dry days, especially later on. Temperatures are likely to be close to the norm for much of the time, but there is a weak warming trend appearing towards the end of the period. So there we have it. It's very mixed after the hot start, the risk of showers, long spells of rain increases, but through the second week, I think there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather, albeit with temperatures much closer to the average than they have been recently. So thank you for watching this. As usual, if you enjoyed it and found it useful, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks now. Bye.